Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now following on from the Joel and Clicker reviews, today we have Ellie, the third figure in the lineup by CC Toys. Now do bear in mind this is made by them in an unofficial capacity. That's why it is third party and unlicensed. Now I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. Forum. I have included the link down below for your reference purposes only, because don't forget, this is not a promotional video, this is a review on a figure that I picked up for my own personal collection. You all know I'm a huge fan of The Last of Us, so I can't wait to have all three of the figures in the line displayed on the shelf. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art for Ellie. It's done in the exact same style as Joel and the Clicker, and I love it. It's simple yet effective, it's very very classy. We've got a super high res shot of the head sculpt right up here on the front of the box, on the side, The Last Survivor Part 2, and all of the relevant legal information on the back. Now, surprisingly, there are two different versions of Ellie to choose from. I opted for the CC Toys one, but there's another company called Master Team who is also making their own version of Ellie. Do let me know if you'd like to see a comparison slash review on that one, because I am very tempted to get it. But here we have her. First, in-hand impressions are very positive. I'm already loving the look and feel of this figure, and I'm already starting to notice something that's getting me a little bit worried. More on that when we take a look at the figure herself. Now, as you can see, she comes with a metric ton of stuff up on top, and even more down below. So what we are going to do now is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything she comes with. Here we have all of the parts and pieces that go with Ellie. Now as you can see, she comes with a ton of stuff. So sit back, relax, brew yourself a nice pot of tea while we take a look at the various accessories. And before you ask down in the comments, you know who you are. No, she doesn't come with a golf club. As for the display base, it's super simple yet super effective. It's a nice, slimline, black rectangular base with a crotch grabber up on top. Would I have preferred a dynamic style diorama base? Yes, absolutely, but that totally gets the job done. Now she does come with the exact same guitar as the one that came with Joel. There's printing for the logo up top real strings, and also the little sticker detail on the inside. This might just be my favourite 1-6 scale guitar, and luckily, because I have Joel and Ellie, I now have two of them. She does come with her backpack, which is significantly weathered. It also has the NASA enamel pin and the little flight wings on the front there, and yes, it's real and working. You can open the zip and put stuff on the inside. Now, something that I totally wasn't expecting is that you get a one-to-one -one scale version of this very pin. So if you wanted to, you can install it on your own backpack. I know my buddy Will, who loves The Last of Us, will probably be doing something with this because let's be honest, it's too cool not to use. She also comes with a jacket. If you want to either hide the jointed arms, or if the seamless arms degrade over time, you can then pop this jacket on. It's completely disheveled, it's perfectly weathered, and I love the way it looks. I haven't decided as of yet whether or not I'm going to display my Ellie with or without the jacket. I will have to let you know. Now, to go along with the seamless arms that she comes wearing out of the box, you have some replacement temporary tattoos. That means the company is fully expecting them to rub off. At the very least, they gave you some replacements, and you also get a bunch of those little straps. Some people said they were for bandages, some people said they were to wrap around the weapons. Either way, you get a bunch of them in that little baggie. Now, seeing as we just spoke about the arms, you do get a jointed pair. This goes to show how much CC Toys care about their products. They could have totally not included these, but they are fully double jointed elbows that go all the way up. So you can go crazy with the posing, and they aren't seamless, so you don't have to worry about any cracks or creases, 
and they have printed their tattoo already on the forearm. This one won't rub off, it's permanently applied, so no worries there. Now let's start to digest some of the weapons, cause she comes with a lot. The first of which is a sniper rifle. I love the way this looks. The sculpt does look like wood, but there isn't a ton of detail or wash in the crevices. That would have brought it out very nicely, but still, it gets the job done. You do have the bolt which moves up and down. Unfortunately, you cannot pull it back, but at the very least, you have some working action there. Next up, she also comes with a shotgun. Now, this doesn't have the moving piece up the front. I'm pretty sure this is the exact same shotgun that also came with Joel. She does come with two handguns, the first of which is a revolver. Yes, this piece in the middle does actually revolve. I like that it's painted in a nice metallic gunmetal. And then this might just be my favourite accessory of the bunch. She does have the little plastic bottle installed on the end of her M9 here, because of course now it's silenced, right? That piece is attached on the front. I love the chrome metallic silver, and yes, you can actually remove the magazine, and there is fully painted bullet detail on the top. So yeah, I'm very likely going to display my Ellie with this weapon right here. Next up, she comes with two different bladed weapons. One small little switch knife with some blood on the end, it is also painted very well, and then this big honkin' machete. It's got some blood on the blade, little chunks taken out of it, and some of that wrap down the bottom, plus the wooden handle is detailed perfectly with a screw on one side. As for the bow and arrow, which you saw in the unboxing segment, there's a real working string, it's sculpted and painted very, very nicely, and she comes with a bunch of arrows as you'd expect. These are all exactly the same, which is totally fine with me. The feather detail is nicely painted with a little bit of blood just on the end. Maybe they've already been shot and re-scavenged out of some infected, or potentially Ellie has been firing so many arrows her fingers are now bleeding. I really like that detail. Speaking of bleeding fingers, she does have a little bit of blood just on her knuckles and also on her fingertips there, and that's on all of the hands. Now, she does come with various little parts and pieces that you would find around the world in The Last of Us. You've got these little scissor pieces which you can craft into things in the game, so you get a few of those. You, of course, get the brick, a very versatile weapon, used for distractions or throwing at infected. It's nicely painted and sculpted, it looks like a 1-6 scale brick. You also get the Molotov cocktail. This one, unfortunately, is empty. I would have liked a little bit of a brown smoked look to it so you can have the liquid, unless this is a clear liquor. Do let me know if you know down in the comments below. She also comes with her little flashlight. Unless I'm misremembering, in the game, sometimes the flashlight went out and you had to shake the controller to reactivate it. This has a little piece on the inside that makes a rattling sound when you shake it. That's a nice touch. Again, something they totally didn't have to do. And there's a little print on the front that says LED light. So some detail even on the smallest of pieces. Before we take a look at the head sculpts, she comes with two smaller pieces. This one right here is a little bracelet that you can use to hide the seams. And I guess technically this isn't the smallest piece, but the detail on the inside is. You have a fully printed notebook with individual pages and a bunch of writing. This, of course, you can see in the game, so I'm pretty sure they've taken scans of the various pages and the various sketches and then gone ahead and printed it into this mini notebook. I love this. Once again, this company is blowing me away with their attention to detail. This is awesome. Now, of course, I'm pretty sure y'all have been hankering to see these two head sculpts. 
I'm not exactly sure how people are going to respond to these. They look, to my eye, pretty darn good. This one in particular, I can see the likeness to Ellie. She's got a furrowed look to the brow. She's very serious. She's about to kick some butt. I like the hair sculpt with the ponytail out the back. It's nicely painted. And she also has some skin texture and the gash over the eyebrow there. As for the other one, it's either an angry or worried look with blood coming down the side. This is my least favourite of the two, but still, they are fantastic sculpts. Then again, even though I thought the Joel head sculpt was fantastic, some people down in the comments told me in that video that it wasn't. So do let me know what you think of these Ellie sculpts. What we are going to do now, though, is get Ellie herself out here and take a closer look. Here we have her standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And yeah, that's Ellie from Last of Us 2. It does literally what it says on the tin. This, if it was made by Hot Toys, would be considered a DX release, in my opinion. You get so much stuff, two different head sculpts, multiple different pieces of clothing that you can interchange if you want the jacket, you want the backpack, you want the shirt. You can pretty much make it look however you want. You also have two different sets of arms. So yeah, a pretty deluxe release, which I am very happy about. That being said, there are a few things which aren't perfect here, and we'll touch on those in just a second. So far, those CC toys have earned the benefit of the doubt. Their figures have been very impressive. What we are going to do now, though, is take her off the rotating turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. And here we have her up close and personal. Now don't worry, you will be seeing the jacket installed on the figure a little bit later in the video. In fact, towards the end when we showcase the three poses. Now I know we've already taken a look at the head sculpt, but it's worth talking about how it sits on the body. Initially, I wasn't sure. I think because the collar does like to stick up, it made her neck look slightly too short. But when you push it down, it looks perfect. So I'm thinking that might be something that'll be remedied by the jacket, because it sits over the top and pushes it down. Speaking of the shirt, though, it's really nicely weathered. It's filthy. There's blood, there's dirt and grime, and it goes all the way around, with a ton more blood on the bottom. She also does have that temporary tattoo pre-installed on the seamless arms. She also has a little bit of blood just splattered over the top. Does the temporary tattoo look fantastic? No, not really. It does the job, but it does have that shiny border around it, and I'm fairly certain that it will crack and degrade. You can install the little wrist piece and it will nicely cover up that seam, so she looks pretty much entirely seamless. She also has some blood on the other arm, which nicely matches to her hand. The shirt underneath is also really nicely tailored and rather dirty. It's not as dirty as the outer shirt, mind you, which makes sense. It's hidden underneath, but there's a little bit of dirt and grime just around the edge there. Coming down to the pants, they are very slim-fitting jeans, once again nicely weathered. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can see just on the surface a little bit of brown dirt, more specifically on the knees, which makes total sense. Then, coming down to her converse, they are filthy, and they are really nicely painted. You do have the accurate Chuck Taylor symbol on the inside, the laces are sculpted on, and there is even detail including the logo on the sole there. These might be some of the best shoes that I've seen from a third-party company, especially when it comes to the paint. They are really nicely weathered. But she does, of course, come with a secondary head sculpt, and they are relatively easy to switch out. There is this little plug piece, and you simply push the new head sculpt on. Unfortunately, this one sits a little bit higher, and I'm still not sure how I feel about it. You will have to let me know which is your favourite, but I think I personally am leaning towards this one. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Ellie, Joel, and the Clicker. And these three were made to go together. I am hoping we get some other types of infected sometime down the line, 
But as you can see, the clicker is by far the tallest here, followed by Joel and Ellie is the smallest. Now, out of the three, Unfortunately, I have to say that Ellie is my least favourite. She does have some issues and we'll get to one big one in just a second, but she also struggles to stand. The type of body that they've chosen just has a bunch of weird articulation that for some reason doesn't quite work. Overall though, as a set, they come together very nicely. Just going over articulation on Ellie. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I've also taken the liberty of switching out one side to the fully jointed arms, which yes, are a lot more unsightly, but will allow for more posability. Unfortunately though, when I was switching out the arms, the seamless one broke on the inside. As you can see, it's all floppy and loosey-goosey. Yes, I do still have the bend at the elbow, but the swivel up the top is completely shattered. I will be contacting Comic Sanctorum to see if I can get a replacement part, because that's not really ideal. It's supposed to be able to be changed, and that's exactly what I did. Now, starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a fixed neck, but it does still get a fairly decent range of motion. Unfortunately, it does just spring back into place, but side to side and pivot does get you a ton of range. The arms will go up the full way. They will, of course, go forward and back on soft ratchets. You have a swivel at the bicep, a butterfly at the shoulder, a double bend at the elbow if you go for the jointed arms, or a single bend if you go for the seamless. Now, you still do have a swivel on the seamless ones, but just be careful because evidently it's rather fragile. We also have a regular smaller scale 1 6 scale wrist peg. As for the torso, we have crunch forward and back, but just like the neck, it doesn't really hold its position. It's rather flimsy in its construction. We have swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to about there. They will go out to there. Swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, which goes all the way up, and a ball joint at the ankle. We don't unfortunately get a ton of range because they are high top converse shoes and they're completely sculpted. Just wrapping up on Ellie from CC Toys. Now going into this, I was super excited and I think for good reason. Their Joel and Clicker figures were sensational, but Ellie posed a unique challenge. It was a brand new body with the ability to switch out the arms, some seamless and some jointed. Now, as you all saw, my seamless arm is completely shattered on the inside and cannot hold a pose anymore. I'm going to try and not let that taint my opinion on the figure overall, because other than that, I've had a great time with this. The head sculpts are fantastic, maybe not 110% perfect, but definitely 80 to 90% there. They're painted really well, there's a ton of skin texture there, and the hair is very well sculpted. The outfit is awesome, it's super weathered, and you have a jacket that you can put on if you decide to go with the jointed arms. I personally will be, because all of the poses that I want to pull off, either with the rifle, or the guitar, or the bow and arrow, or even the pistols, they require double joints. The seamless arms look great, they're very realistic, but the jointed ones just provide way more in terms of functionality. Now I did have a bit of a brainwave. They provide you spare temporary tattoos, so if you wanted to, you could very well get a seamless bison body with way more posability and it's way more durable and then just use one of the tattoos that they give you and put it on the bison. I'm also contemplating doing that but for now we're going with the jointed arms with the jacket on and you'll never see them anyway. So I do still recommend her if you are not a huge fan of jointed arms though, maybe pick up the M Toys version because that one I've heard far less in the way of horror stories. Overall though, still a solid release by CC Toys and I will be keeping a keen eye on the company to see if they make alternate versions from The Last of Us Part 2. Now I got mine from Comic Sanctorum. Do bear in mind, it's third party, it's unlicensed, it's made in an unofficial capacity. 
capacity. I have also included the link down below to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.